In this video, I'm going to revisit advanced answer options in your multiple choice single answer questions. Uh, quite some time ago, I did a video on uh, specifically uh, advanced answer options uh, in multiple choice single answer questions. For those that haven't seen that video before, I've decided to revisit it because I, I think I was actually mistaken on how I presented the information. Here's an example, and in fact, it's the very same example that I used in that first video. For those that haven't run into this feature before, you can create a standard uh, multiple choice single answer question. Uh, it's important to note that, that uh, advanced answer options are only available or only really work if you have a single correct answer. Uh, because the idea here is that you're, you're providing feedback for specific single choices that the user has made. So in this particular case, I have four possible choices and an all of, or actually three and an all of the above. The all of the above is, is a distractor in this case. Uh, as I think I mentioned in the previous version of this video. But what you can see that I've done here is that there are captions for each answer. So if I select uh, use the closest door number, every door has a unique number. That's the correct answer. And you can see I've changed the color of the caption to be green to indicate to users that this is a correct answer and they'll be able to go forward. Uh, and I say that's correct. Each door has a unique number you can use uh, to identify your location. Click anywhere, press Y to continue. And then, of course, I have a distractor. Uh, this next one here is no need. The fire department will look for you no matter where you are. And I'm pointing out that this is uh, time consuming and not a good way to locate someone. And uh, use the GPS in your phone is another answer. And I'm suggesting again indoors, this probably isn't going to work. And all of the above, it'll just say there is a single answer to this question that is correct. Please consider another answer. So what this will do is that when the user launches this particular slide, they'll make a choice. They, they will uh, see a single answer uh, feedback that's very specific to them. So in this case here, if we go to the quiz panel, you can see that, uh, let's just take a look at how this question is set up. There are four answers. There's no points. There's no penalty. Uh, the, only, um, the only caption um, that is created by the quiz slide itself is the incomplete uh, item, which is probably, there it is, yeah, behind the correct answer there. And I've added a clear button so that I can clear off any of the feedback items that appear, although clicking anywhere will usually get rid of them as well. Uh, there's no back or skipped button. Uh, and on success, we're going to go to the next slide and continue with the rest of the project. Uh, there's no uh, failure action because, of course, this is infinite attempts. And uh, in the version of the video before, I attempted to show how you could make it limited to one or two ch uh, tries. Uh, that actually doesn't work. And that's why I'm revisiting this video today or, or this slide. But what if you do want to limit the number of tries or if it is a final test question, um, you know, where you want to give them maybe two tries to get the correct answer, but provide them some guidance and feedback along the way. Well, I figured this out, and I don't know if this is the best solution in the world, but it's a solution that I think will work. Uh, let me first of all reline up all of these uh, captions here. We know they're there. We don't really need to have them all spread out like this. So I'll just uh, align them to the, the one object that's there. So as you can see, with a standard knowledge or a standard question slide, regardless of whether it's a knowledge check or not, there's a point on the timeline where this particular slide pauses. Now, this is the final pause, if you will. So I'm going to put that actually very near the end. Now, in theory, there would be a pause for each one of these other 
captions, uh, but in actual fact, there's not. So one of the things that you can do starting with, um, and honestly, I don't know which version. My guess is Adobe Captivate 7 or 6, somewhere in there. But the introduction of being able to use shapes as buttons allows this solution to work. So I'm going to add uh, a shape here. And it doesn't need to be anything special. I'm just going to throw it up at the top of the screen where it's going to be out of the way. And that is an object, unlike, um, unlike buttons or click boxes, this is an object that you can actually put on a question slide. If there were buttons and click boxes available on question slides, uh, which is a limitation that's been around since the very beginning, you would be able to uh, to do this uh, as early as version 2 or 3 or, or whichever version. But now that we can create a button on a quiz slide by using a shape, and then we'll go to the properties panel and check off use as button. What's great about this now is that I can set a pause point for that particular button. So let's say, for example, I'm pausing the entire question slide at 12 seconds. So let's pause this at 11 seconds. Okay. So now I have two pause points. And this will work well if I'm going to give them two tries. But I'm going to give them three tries. And let's do it this way. We'll add, um, we'll actually duplicate this one. That's probably the easiest way. Um, we'll just put it side by side there. And we'll make the pause point for this 10 seconds. So if you take a look at the timeline now, you see that I have, uh, you know, three different pause points. I think that's the right number. This is kind of a tricky mind exercise here. Um, now, I don't need these buttons to do anything because their only function for this slide is to pause the slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties associated with those buttons. And under the Actions tab, we're going to get rid of the Go to Next Slide action, which is usually the default. And uh, do I need to do anything else to this thing? No, that's fine. And we'll do the same thing for this one here. No action. Uh, I will select both of them and go to the Style tab. And I'm going to make this not visible to users. I guess I could move it into the white space here. But for uh, for a universal sense, because not all templates have a white space like this, we'll just make it completely transparent. And we'll get rid of the outline, the stroke, if you will. Now, you'll still be able to just kind of make it out. If you get in real close here, you can see there's an outline. That's for you and I. The end user who sees this slide won't see that at all. I'm going to add one more shape, but this one's for a different purpose. And I'm going to put this down here. And this shape will make it uh, the color of my incorrect items. We're going to get rid of the outline on that. And I'm just going to add a message. You have, and let me just change the color. You have exhausted your tries for this question. Click this caption to continue. And continue, of course, that can be, um, you know, send you to another part of the course, whether it's the next slide or whether you're intending to do some remediation and send them back to an earlier point, point in the course where they can review this material and then, you know, make another attempt. Um, so here we're going to uh, turn this into a button. And that will be the function of going to the next slide, in this case here. And we'll just add a 
and cursor. And I like to disable the click sound. So that, there's an option here. Now, of course, this has a pause associated with it as well. And when do we want to see that? We want to see that sort of the last point after the final click of the slide. Um, and then we want to shorten the appearance of this. Actually, let's turn off the pause for a moment. We want this to appear after because we don't want to see it until we've tried everything. Let's say 12.5 seconds, which is darn near close to the end of the, the slide. But what I need to do now is take a closer look at those advanced actions. So obviously the correct answer will allow you to go to the next slide. But what happens with these ones? Well, previously I had set them for no action, but now I actually need them to continue playing the course. In other words, to take it off of pause and to continue with the playing of this slide. So we're just going to set that up for all of the wrong answers. And we'll see if that works. I'm kind of trying this for the first time. I've done a couple of little experiments. We'll see if this functions the way I think it will. And we'll just do preview next five slides. So here's our preview of this slide. Now you notice you can't see those extra buttons. And of course, that extra caption that I've added is not visible either. So let's choose some wrong answers first and see if this works as we would expect it to. So we'll hit Submit. That's incorrect. There is a, a single answer to this question that is correct. Please consider another answer. Uh, so let's try this now. Submit. This would probably not work indoors and certainly wouldn't convey what, okay. So uh, we'll try another wrong answer. That's incorrect. This would be extremely time. And now I see, oh, I have exhausted my tries for this question. Click this caption to continue. And that brings me to the next slide. So this, uh, this will work. So in this case here, I'm three tries. And then I'm, I'm shown the exhausted try message and they need to click this caption to continue. You could put actually, uh, if you wanted to click anywhere to continue, you could put a transparent shape that becomes your click box in addition to your message. And clicking either the box or somewhere else on the screen would uh, take them to either the next slide or somewhere else in the course. That would work. So essentially what you need is you need one caption for exhausting your tries, the feedback for all of your items, and of course uh, the appropriate number of pause buttons. In this case I have two uh, because I want to give them three tries. If I wanted to give them two tries, I would only have one smart shape used as a button. And, uh, and obviously you need to stagger those pauses so that this, uh, this uh, interaction will truly work. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.